Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 134 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of stent loss. The patient had diabetes and multivessel coronary artery disease with significant lesions in the circumflex as well as the left anterior descending artery with a bifurcation lesion with the first agronal branch. He was referred for coronary bypass surgery, however, he declined and he was referred for multivessel percutaneous coronary intervention. We can see here he does have extensive disease in the proximal LAD with severe calcification and good quality distal vessel, along with the obtuse marginal lesion. So the question here is how do we approach this case? Multivessel coronary disease, significant calcification. These are the 14 steps of percutaneous coronary intervention. A very important question in this particular patient is which lesion to do first. They both are significant and require vascularization. In our case, we consider the circumflex to be easier and decide to do this first before attempting a PCI of the LAD. Also, there was a question for the need for atherectomy given the severe calcification. Our plan was to first see if a balloon will dilate, if not, perform atherectomy. And we plan to also use intravascular imaging given the calcification to ensure that the vessel was well treated and the stents well expanded. The patient had a normal ejection fraction, no support was needed. So we wire the circumflex as well as the LAD and the diagonal branch. We perform balloon inflation in the circumflex, however there was rupture of the balloon. After rupture, we want to make sure there is no perforation, which was confirmed by angiography. However, after this, we decided to proceed with modification of the lesion with atherectomy. We used orbital atherectomy over the Viper flex tip guide wire that uh, successfully modified the lesion after performing multiple passes. Balloon now expanded well, and then we did place a drag eluting stand, obtaining a nice result. So the circumflex is treated. The next question is how to treat the lady. We tried to advance a balloon there, but the balloon would not even cross. So that was another indication for doing a thorectomy. So we exchanged our guide wire for a Viper flex tip guide wire and performed a repeat uh, preparation of the LAD using orbital atherectomy. That lesion significantly improved. We did not have a wire in the diagonal while doing a thorectomy to minimize the risk of the wire fracture. But then uh, we did have a good balloon expansion of the LAD after a therectomy was performed. This is a bifurcation. It's a Medina, essentially 111. However, um, there doesn't seem to be significant severe disease in the origin of the diagonal. So we decided to use the provisional approach. We did insert a workhorse wire into the diagonal branch. And we deployed a 3.0 by 40 millimeter drag eluting stand all the way from the ostium of the LAD to the mid LAD. Our plan was to not place a stand into the circumflex, although immediately the ostium of the circ appears to have disease. So we performed a standing of the LAD that uh, provided a nice result in the proximal segment. However, there remained an area that uh, required additional treatment distal to the distal location, distal edge of the initially placed stand. We did uh, use a 3.0 millimeter balloon to predilate a little more, but then had difficulty delivering a 275 by 18 millimeter drag eluting stand, which uh, unfortunately came off the balloon and remained into the proximal LAD. So we have a situation here of a stand that is lost within the coronary artery. And the important question is whether we should uh, try to retrieve it or we should try to deploy or crush it. In this particular case, the stand was located within the proximal LAD inside the previously placed stand. We decided to do a brief attempt to retrieve the stand using the small balloon technique, which involves us advancing a small balloon through the stand and then inflating the balloon distally and pulling the whole assembly back and then if it didn't work, uh, proceed with uh, stand deployment or crushing. But unfortunately, we were unable to retrieve the stand. And this is not uncommon because sometimes the reason for the stand being lost is that the stand has become deformed 
and then attempts to bring it back fail because the profile of the stand has changed. We did not want to proceed with further attempts to retrieve the stand. There is actually a case, case 167 in the Manual of CTO Interventions, in which snaring of the stand and forceful attempt to retrieve it caused the perforation. In this case, we decided to just deploy the stand, so we inserted increasingly larger balloons through the low stand and then deployed it inside the previously placed stand in the proximal LAD. And then to deliver more stands further down, we ended up using a guide extension. This is a six French telescope that made delivery of another stand to the middle LAD very easy. And this was subsequently deployed, providing a nice result with TM3 flow into the LAD and uh, not losing any significant diagonal branch. The question is, are we all done now? And the challenge here is that the ostium of the circumflex appears to be suboptimal. There may be actually some plug shift or possible dissection of the ostium of the circumflex. We decided to treat the proximal circumflex using the provisional technique by placing a stand from the circumflex all the way into the left main. We do need at least 8 millimeters into the main to perform the proximal optimization technique. The stand was deployed. Then a pot was performed with a 4.5 by 8 millimeter balloon. And then the LED was rewired. And then kissing balloon inflation was performed, followed by a, fi a final proximal optimization technique and a nice result in both LED and the circumflex. This was confirmed by intravascular ultrasound that was performed in both LAD and the circumflex and did demonstrate a good stand expansion and stand strata position all the way into the left main. So in summary, this is an example of a patient with complex multivessel coronary artery disease. Because of diabetes, surgery would have been the preferred approach, but the patient had declined surgery. We tried to dilate the lesions, but the circumflex was balloon undilatable and the lady was balloon uncrossable. And that is why we did a modification with orbital atherectomy that enabled equipment delivery as well as stand expansion. We did unfortunately have a loss of a stand in the LAD. We failed retrieval attempt with a small balloon and eventually deployed the stand inside the previously placed stand. Sometimes deploying or crushing the stand is safer than being very aggressive about uh, retrieving the stand because the latter may actually lead to complications. And finally, we did have the provisional strategy done both in the LAD for the LAD diagonal bifurcation as well as the circumflex for the proximal circumflex lesion and it did work well in both cases. Thank you very much.